You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. So this is a story that David sent me earlier in the week that uh, that really really resonated with me because of um, because of uh, some reading that I've been doing and uh, some of the rhetoric that I've seen around undocumented immigrants and their effects on the wages of native workers and the ability of native workers to find work and what this story is is that the USDA has decided to cancel a semi-annual survey that is used to calculate pay for farm workers for agricultural guest workers and uh, legal legal agricultural guest workers these are not American citizens but these are legal immigrants that come here to do uh, work as uh, you know, they have documentation here, and the USDA has decided to cancel a semi-annual survey that is used to can- uh, to to calculate their pay. It's used by contractors. It's used by the labor department to set minimum wages, et cetera, et cetera. And um, this decision has been challenged by the United Farm Workers Union, and uh, the reason that it's been challenged is that this is going to severely cut pay for these legal agricultural guest workers and when i say really hit pay like when i say it's going to really decrease their wages what do i mean i mean that in georgia guest workers agricultural guest workers are looking at their wages going from fourteen dollars and 77 cents an hour to seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour, it could go all the way down to the minimum wage without um, without this survey being done. In Michigan, wages could fall to nine dollars and sixty-five cents an hour from fourteen dollars and forty cents. And uh, so, what this <clears throat> what this does for me, what this illustrates to me, is that the argument that Donald Trump, that his propagandists in the media have, the argument that they make about um, about undocumented immigrants, and oh, we don't like undocumented immigrants because they hurt wages, they hurt uh, they hurt the ability of native workers to find jobs, uh, blah 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 blah. They don't care about that because this is the Trump USDA that is doing this. This is the Trump administration, and they also say that they don't care. Uh, you know, they don't care about immigration. They just don't like undocumented immigration. They just don't like illegal immigration. Okay? That's a bunch of nonsense because this is the Trump administration, the hard right uh, uh, anti immigrant Trump administration that is cutting wages for immigrant workers uh, in 2020. Why would they do that if they were actually concerned with low wage immigrant with low wage undocumented immigrants hurting native workers wages? If they were concerned about that, they would also be concerned with legal immigrants, with documented immigrants low wages hurting native workers. But here we have the Trump administration barreling forward on a plan that is going to cut pay in half for legal immigrant workers here in uh, in Georgia in Michigan and, and in, in other places where agricultural guest work is is common I mean it's just it is absurd when you every time every time you hear Donald Trump or a conservative propagandist in the media trying to uh, trying to sell you a bill of goods about how undocumented immigrants are your enemies, about how undocumented immigrants are the reasons that your wages are low or the reason that you can't find a job, show them this. Show them this, because here we've got conservative uh, Trump administration officials purposely cutting wages of agricultural guest workers in America. And... Who is it that is standing up for their wages? And this isn't just, and this isn't, and, and you know, this isn't just going to affect these immigrants' wages. This will affect the uh, the broader economy of of uh, native workers who are going to be doing this agricultural work. Okay, so and who is it that is standing up for these workers' wages? 
Is it the Trump administration? No. They're the ones that are trying to cut it. Is it Democrats? No. No, it's not Democrats. It's the unions. It's the United Farm Workers. It's the lawyers for the United Farm Workers Union. That's who is standing up uh, for these workers' wages. And that's what we talk about every week. And that's, that's why it is important to have your own independent advocates. It's, it's important to be able to be your own advocate. You can't count on politicians, Democrats or Republicans, to protect you. You can't count on them to raise your wages for you. You have to do it yourself. And that's what these workers are doing. Uh, the, the United Farm Workers are fighting for their members. They're fighting for each other. Uh, so uh, they're, they're fighting for each other so that they can uh, um, they're gonna they're gonna be able to f so that they can feed their families. And it's not it's not the Trump administration that's fighting for them. It's not the Trump administration that is fighting for uh, the native workers that they're going to be competing with. It's the United Farm Workers. It's the union, and that's why. You know, I was asked why uh, why does the labor movement support undocumented immigrants in their um, in so far as believing that they should be able to organize? That's why. Because if these uh, or or any immigrants to be able to organize, because division of the working class only helps the boss. Okay, if we allowed. If these agricultural farm workers, if these guest workers allowed themselves to be to be divided uh, along documented and undocumented lines, along immigrant and native born lines, they would not as effectively be able to fight the boss and to fight the Trump administration in their attempt to cut their wages. But because they're together, because they are uh, standing together in solidarity, They've got a fighting chance here. Are they going to win? Maybe not. Not necessarily. You know, we don't. We can't tell the future. But we know that they've got a lot better chance fighting together than they would uh, going in it alone. And that's the that's the beauty of unions. That's the beauty of organizing, of collective action, of of uh, being able to take matters into your own hands, not having to rely on politicians. Because um, that's not going to get you anywhere. But if you can fight for yourself, if you can fight for your brothers and sisters on the job, that is uh, that's going to be a lot more effective. That is, it's it's going to be a lot more effective um, because you don't have to rely on anybody else. So, you know, join a union. <laughs> join a union, folks. Uh, we're coming up on a break here. So make sure you stay tuned. Uh, we've got another half hour. If you want to give me a call, 1-866-494-9866 is the number. So stay tuned. This is the Valley Labor Report. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate your time. Uh, if you want to see what we're up to throughout the week and get our snide quips about the news of the day, then you should follow us on social media. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Valley Labor Report. We're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore A-L. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist. That's spelled R-A-D-I-C-L Unionist. If you missed part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, search YouTube for The Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. You can go back and watch the full show there, and we also clip segments throughout the week. And we also upload the program on more than 11 different podcasting apps. So you can see if we're on your listening platform of choice, you can go to The Valley Labor Report dot transistor dot fm slash subscribe. And if you appreciate our work and want to help us stay on the air, then consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com slash the Valley Labor Report.